a call to order the regular meeting of the December 8, 2021 Fitchburg Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission has seven members. Members are citizens residing in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. The Commission is appointed by the City Council and serves on a volunteer basis. The Commission collaborates with the residents, businesses, and organizations to facilitate compliance with the eight interests of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Fitchburg Wetlands Recording Bylaw. in progress. Meetings of this Commission are subject to and abide by the open meeting law. If you would like more information about any of these regulations, feel free to ask a commissioner, the agent, or environmental consultant. Thank you for your commitment to the conservation of our natural resources. Thank you for your patience as we navigate this hybrid meeting. The commission requests that citizens wishing to speak approach the podium and speak clearly into the microphone. And remote attendees maintain microphones on mute for privacy. If you would like to speak, use the chat or raise your hand function to alert the chair of your intentions. Oh, I wanted to bring up, um, we hadn't been doing the Pledge of Allegiance because we were remote, and, um, but I wondered if anybody was interested in that uh, since we're back here. Sure. Okay, so we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance this time. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the roll. Commissioner Bro. Hi guys, I'm here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Christian. Here. Commissioner Donnelly. Here. Commissioner Helene was unable to attend tonight. Commissioner Sarah Field in attendance. Um, we have some minutes to, uh, did anyone get a chance to Look at the minutes. I did. Have any concerns or questions about the minutes? Yes. Go ahead. Um, on uh, under Mad River Solar and Karen Capone, the sentence ends in the middle of a sentence. Downgrading from the site of the solar array, I guess. That's what kind of what I guessed, but I wasn't sure. And I think also there's a there's kind of an, uh, a slight error in the in the um, description because where you say there was to be wood chips spread at the perimeter of the site in order to slow down runoff from the cleared area, there were also going to be wood chips across the site, as I remember. Okay. Um, maybe in, in several barrier strips. Of course, that wasn't apparently done. I recall you're right, Ralph. Okay. Any That's other a, concerns? Any other concerns? Can we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes for the November 10, 2021 regular meeting? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so, uh, so moved. Um, so the first, um, First item is, well, both of our hearings tonight have been, um, request, there's been requests to continue by the applicants. So both the um, notice of intent for Leclerc and the notice of intent for grief, there was a request to continue. Do we need to vote on that? Or I think, it? right, but just a quick word for on each. Um, I had a discussion with folks at GPR, who is the um, engineer of record for Leclerc. Um, as you know, their principal engineer that was involved in it, his wife had a baby, so he couldn't be here month, uh, last month. The uh, person he had uh, would be subbing for him is out for an extended period of time. So I talked to the superior. They're in the process of responding um, in writing to the issues that Tim had brought up and that the commission had brought up, but they just asked for more time. And they felt that uh, the Jan second uh, Wednesday in January there, there would be enough time for them 
to get things to Tim and the commission members with enough time prior to January 12th to be able to look at that and review it. And on the um, Snowmill Pond one, I understood from the engineer who presented um, at last month's meeting that if you recall, they were going for a ch chapter 253, I think, uh, license from the Office of Dam Safety. They were requested to make some revisions to that plan, so they asked for time to make those uh, revisions. Probably better now than have to come back to the commission after you know, an order of conditions had been issued. So that's the background on that. So we'll have, we can have both of those at the January 12th meeting. All right, can we have a motion to continue the notice of intent for LeClaire to the January 12th meeting? Motion and a second. Make a motion. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to, can I have a motion and a second to continue the notice of intent for Grief Incorporated Snowmill Pond? To the January 12th meeting. Grief. <laughs> Grief, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so moved. A long day. <laughs> um, and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so moving on to the um, other business. <laughs> Madam Chair, we have um, Mark Pimarini on the um, yeah. on the wastewater and uh, uh, <laughs> water and wastewater commission as a citizen, but during the day works for <laughs> Lemonster, or actually assistant director, isn't it, of Lemonster DPW? Okay. The water main we have, it's a 12-inch main. It travels down Nichols and Battle Street and goes north of the airport and then over by AKS Recycling and then up under the Crawford Street, you know, railroad tracks and up to North Street and Lemonster, so, but it goes through Fitchburg. But there's a break on the peninsula, of course, in between Baker Brook and Nashua. So uh, we asked, you know, Mike for an emergency cert. So we're, we did clear a path out to there, so we, we just have to fix it now. So the path is cleared. So we got to get out there to, to start fixing it. It'll probably be starting tomorrow to, to level out the path out there. Mr. Pierman, have you been working with the water department about that? I mean, I guess you have been, because there was some concerns. I think there's like a berm that they don't want anybody to touch. I, Jeff, I remember Jeff talking about the berm and some other we're not on. We're not on the banking. I haven't spoke okay. to anybody here because our just because the water main okay. is, is not connected to anything in Fitchburg. It's just our main, you know. But where we're where we're traveling, if you you know you want to go out there and take a look, it's it's the highest point. You know, we're trying to stay up in the top middle so we're not near either of the brooks to get out there. But, but don't you have to cross one of the, no. the river or the brook to get no, there? No, we're coming off of Airport Road. If you. If, I can point to you. The two, the two groups make a V here, mm -hmm. so we're coming off here, coming back to us. Mm -hmm. okay. And that, so the commission members know, that is Conservation Commission land. Yeah, you, you, you don't have an opportunity to come in through the uh, re recycle plant. No, no, we would have to cross over Baker Brook to get where the break is. I, I can show you. I can see Baker Brook. Yeah, his bacon. His and here you are. No, that's that's an old main that just, okay. that was another breakaway a few okay. years for me. But I, okay, so I, right I see, here. I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Mark, there is there is a berm, a sewer trunk line, but that's on the opposite side. That's right? on the other side of the Nashua. Yeah. But our, our water main does go up over your sewer main. But yeah. that's not where where the issue is. So maybe that's what um, Jeff was. Had mentioned. Yeah, that's probably the term that um, you were referring to. Uh, uh, probably the one that, that Jeff was talking about, this trunk line that runs through that berm. 
other side. On the other side of the map. This water main does cross over the trunk sewer at a, a few different points. Um, but in the particular area where he's digging, there's, there's no real worry of, of conflict or anything like that. So Mark, I guess a question, how is this affected uh, Lemonster's water? Uh, well, fortunately, North Lemons has the main that comes up Main Street and then this main. So, I mean, we have one main feeding, but obviously it's always better in the water to have a loop. Yeah. Yeah. So we just want to get this you know, fixed. I mean, we should be done. We're going to probably, I'd say we'd be done by the end of next week. No later. Have you already cleared your access? We cleared, the road's cleared. Just, now we just got to, you know, obviously it's up and down. So we're going to just go in with the loader and just level it off a little bit and then we'll start. It's it. pretty much garbage correct it is <laughs> um do you have any plans of uh doing anything on your way out yeah um well mike put in the emergency order we'll we'll cover it back up with brush and debris you know leaf debris to try and keep it so it doesn't erode after we leave so just let the junk come back yeah. up I, I, might be a good time for us to take a look at our land yeah we have access to it. Yeah, I know, yeah, you'll have a, I was thinking even when we're done, we might put some big rocks, because now it'll be open, you know, I don't want anybody just driving up there. We'll put some big rocks in the front so people won't get access. Well, Commissioner Donnelly, do you want to go down there and uh, while they're working? Well, yeah. I, I, I'm going on my own. I mean, if they're working down there, I'd be happy to go on my own. I just, we have access, we <laughs> own it. We haven't done a thing to it. Um, it was a proposal to, to improve it um, several years ago, very informal, um, didn't go anywhere, but not too late. That's so I guess, much, yeah. Madam Chair, if we could, so because this happened kind of as an emergency, yeah. um, we sent, I sent an email around to folks and you were okay with the idea of sending an emergency certification and I signed on behalf of the commission. Okay. So I guess maybe a vote just to uh, accept that or ratify it um, and if that was good that was issued maybe for 30 two. days so yeah it's, we're good right. until January early January I believe. And you'll be done by then oh, yeah. Mark. Yeah. okay you should be done before Christmas so. okay yeah. well if you need an extension of time just give a ring yeah I'll let you know we may you know we're gonna fix the break but we may in the future well if, if I did something in the future there'll be a notice but we might just try and fix the whole thing eventually <laughs> but we'll do a notice of intent for that if I, if I do that so do we need a motion and a second to uh, I think to, support the I, emergency certificate? Yeah, some language like that, or to ratify it, or something, something like that, to say that you're in agreement with that. So we were informed, and they jumped on it, and we're going to go through a formality now of, of approving it, if you will. Are we asking too much to have something in writing uh, in terms of restoration, in terms of a time slot, in terms um, oftentimes we let Fitchburg pass on it. Maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't, but um, Sister City, maybe get a little bit more out of them, a paper trail. It's up to you. I don't mind writing something up. Um, an engineered plan, a little bit much, but some, some element of, of a written statement about your pro the process. Okay, yeah, we can do that. I, 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 I think it's in order. Okay. Uh, I, I have sort of an ancillary point to make. I went by there the other day and I saw your equipment yep. and I wondered what it was doing um, because this is, this is actually one of the rare places in the city uh, in that part of the city where we could potentially have access to the natural river for a, uh, a boat launch for people who want to uh, canoe up and down that stretch of the river. And uh, I don't, I've never been in there, so I don't know whether the land is suitable and it's certainly not part of your project. But um, do you know if it, is there access to the river there? Oh yeah, yeah, where the break is, it's just low brush. I mean, but the thing is, the rivers go, you know, it's steep, so you'd have to. I see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it would be something separate, but, you know, Nick, um, we should probably discuss that sometime and see if it might be possible to create uh, a path where people would have to carry. They wouldn't be allowed to, you know, back down there with a vehicle, but if they could pull off in the area where your equipment is and park. And if some signage could be put up, maybe we could actually create a, a boat launch there, which would be a plus for that part of the city. Yeah, I agree. We can, we can 
certainly look into that. Um, I, I don't know, if, I heard Mary Jo talk about some sort of proposed development somewhere out there. I don't know if it was that parcel or a little bit further down past Blueberry Lane to Cover Drive, but. Uh, on on private property or on the airport property? I guess it was city property. I don't know if it was airport property or the Concom parcel that we're talking about here. I know this is an old landfill, so I don't, I don't think it would be suitable. But uh, The only thing I'm thinking of is either that portion where they've um, removed the runway maybe that is on, is near Crawford Street or the airport pit itself. I know the airport pit. She was talking about something on, on the airport side of Crawford Street, so it must have been at the old runway area. I assume it wouldn't be this landfill, but... Um, yeah, uh, Commissioner Baker, to your point, yeah, I, I think it would be a, a nice amenity for residents to be able to launch a canoe there. And it was part of the, the, the Fitchburg Trails vision plan. There is a little section on blue trails, and we, we talked about the possibility of doing that somewhere down there. And this would be an obvious place since it is Conscom property. Okay, thank you. I, 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 not lemonsed, but we're on the subject. You, you want to finish with that and stay on the subject, if I may? <laughs> Want to finish with Lemisa? So, uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Piermarini, um, we would like you to submit something, a Written paper trail video. for us to have um, okay. of what you're doing. And um, is there any specifics you want to give him for it beyond? Well, if they were an applicant and they were going to go in and put in a water line, they'd tell us how they were going to get in, okay. what they were going to do to stabilize it on our way out, how they're going to stabilize the banking or, uh, or any sensitive area while they were doing it in a formal document, and uh, we're going to approve it, but, okay. but that's an appropriate request. Yeah, like a construction sequence. I can do that. Okay. And formally approved. <clears throat> did we vote? Did we get the? We vote. Did we get a second and a, a, a? I don't think so. Not yet. Okay. Do we have a second then? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Now go ahead. Okay, to the point um, again. Uh, aside <clears throat> from this, <clears throat> so one of the sticking points uh, back in the day with that land down there, uh, somebody wanted to use it for. Uh, uh, a use other than conservation. And so that always becomes a sticking point. And we don't go any further. So <clears throat> the idea of a boat launch and access to it, um, <clears throat> two things. One is that the operator of a business down there is in probably inclined to do it for us, Ralph, uh, in return for space. Mm. And, and then what I'd also like to request <clears throat> There's an agreement, be Michael, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's an agreement between the city and the recycling plant. Uh, they remain on Conservation Commission land, which they encroached in several years ago. And hmm. there was a negotiated agreement, right or wrong? I'd have to check, Mike. They'll, they, they continue to encroach. I thought there was a resolution to it. The it is under the Conservation Commission's management. Um, we're probably entitled to the language of that agreement, and I'd like to see it. And importantly, if there was any financial consideration, and there should have been, um, we ought to be the recipients of that. Um, but more importantly, is a lot of things that get in the way of, of using Conservation Commission land is use and appropriate use, approved use, and I don't understand how an agreement could have been reached without the Conservation Commission's involvement. Uh, so I'd like the language of that agreement if it exists. All right, I'll check with um, Steve on the Board of Health. Anything regarding the landfill, I think. Uh, it, I think it, it, it would have been, I believe it would have been between the city attorney, city attorney. Uh, they encroached on the land. We didn't ask them to move it. And uh, they were just running an operation there. But it came to a head, and a resolution was met, to my knowledge. And we weren't any part of it. I want to be a part of it. I want the language of the agreement. And because... I, Again, to my knowledge, it's got to go to the state legislature if it's not being used as cons, cons con land, like a boat launch. Maybe we can try and get that. Yeah, I'll we'll check into that. Yeah. Okay, anything else? I love the idea of a boat launch. 
Awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Uh -huh. Chair, as long as there's a yeah. representative <laughs> of DPW, I think Jeff wants to be congratulated on being assistant commissioner, A. Uh, I mean, go ahead, uh, yes. Acting commissioner? Um, so I, I'm Inter serving right now as acting commissioner. I don't know when and if that's going to become um, official. Um, but I just I wanted to come here tonight to introduce uh, our new civil engineer. His name is Jeff. Um, so Jeff, I don't know if you want to give a little background on yourself or sure. introduce yourself. Uh, so my name is Jeff Hillman. Uh, I grew up in Lunenburg, and now I live in Lemeser. I went to UMass Lowell, and I have a, a civil engineering degree. Uh, I'm a licensed PE, and I've been working in the industry uh, for the last decade, basically. Uh, as a uh, civil and environmental uh, engineer doing wa uh, wastewater, sewer, and um, uh, in uh, uh, water main infrastructure design. So, Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, uh, Jeff, i got to ask, with the last name Hillman, is there any tie-in to some of the Fitchburg? No. Uh, my family my family's actually from the Coal Rain uh, Deerfield area, so uh, I'm not related to the judge. Okay. Uh, but I actually had Mrs. Hillman as a teacher when I was in high school, so that was kind of interesting. But, yeah. So, um, Mr. Hillman, we are really excited to have such a great relationship with the DPW on the Conservation Commission, and um, we're uh, happy to welcome you to our team. Um, is, uh, does this mean we'll be working with Mr. Hillman? Yeah, so between Jeff and myself, you know, we'll continue to try to split duties when it comes to attending the meetings. Um, Jeff will probably start taking over a lot of the, the, the reviews that get forwarded our way. Um, providing comments to the commission and, and whatnot. That's great. Um, but we'll, we'll still both be heavily involved with, you know, anything that you guys would like us to be involved with. That's great. Uh, Mr. Hillman, we uh, like to extend the opportunity to uh, all of our stakeholders to attend the MAC conferences. And um, if you'd like to participate in any of those, just work with Mike here and he can get you, um, re you know, registered and we, take care of that for you if you'd like to go. Um, I guess the last couple of years it's been difficult to, to do it, but I mean, if you'd like to do any of that, um, we'd be happy to have you do that. I know Jeff, Jeff Morosky went with me a couple of times and uh, if there's anything that we can do to support you, um, we, we are certainly happy to do that. Perfect. Happy to have you on board. Thank you, thanks for having me. In, uh, speaking of Jeff, who's gone on to Lexington? No, Concord. Concord. Um, Tony Marissa is uh, slated, I think, next council meeting oh, in order sweet. to be um, designated as the to step into Jeff's shoes. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, <me. laughs> That's wonderful. We look forward to um, to having a great relationship with you, and if you want to have him review the. Uh, revised boilerplate order of conditions feel free to loop him in and uh, see what he has to say about it we just hadn't they hadn't been revised in a long time so we're just working on chipping away at those things and yeah we look forward to having you, Perfect. Thank you. thanks for coming to the meeting thank you I don't know if you want to skip around or would you like Madam Chair? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Next, we've got the dues for the Nashville River Watershed Association. Oh, yeah. Can we have a... Um, how much are they? Uh, let me check here. It is... Oh, it's the same as it was last year. Uh, $100. Okay. Do we have a motion and a second to uh, appropriate the funds to pay for the Nashville River Watershed Association dues? Motion made. And a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Brian? I think I have to recuse myself. You're gonna myself. recuse, I, hey, yes, thank you. I, I, I don't know what we got. I, I, in the last year, I don't recall getting any correspondence from them personally or collectively? 
I don't remember any correspondence in the last year. Don't you get emails because I do. Oh goodness, no, I, I get a lot of emails from the National okay, Water Association. Yeah, Martha Morgan is stays in in pretty consistent touch. I, I would say. Yeah, let's get your name on that uh, list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we? Hey, it doesn't mean I get them. It just means I don't remember getting them. <laughs> Michael, I can go back uh, a few months and, you know, just search for MACC and forward the ones in the past however long back yeah. for what it's worth. Well, as I said, you mean I just don't remember. I might have gotten them. In our WA. You said that. WA, right. Because <laughs> I was going to bring up on a related note, I got a note from MACC that next year's dues uh, are, will be $299. Um, an increase of 2% from last year, but we haven't gotten the invoice for that as of yet. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, next, uh, so we've got the Fitchburg State proposed track resurfacing. Is that person? Yeah, let me uh, bring that up here. And actually I have, um, I can bring it up on the screen. If I uh, check with Dan and see how to share oh, screen. Am I going in order here? Um, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot which button to switch. Yeah. So remember to put it on a wide shot because otherwise, it, um, so it's. Screen and uh, that one, yeah. Yeah, let's. I'll share just the uh, just that one, and then blow up, blow it up however you need to. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tuesday as background. Tuesday before Thanksgiving, got a note from a consultant working for Fitchburg State University asking what, and I have it on the uh, screen here, what it would um, take in order to re just simply resurface the the track area. And oh, I, now I'm going to scroll down again. Replace existing turf carpet, repair areas of the track that need to be patched, and there are a few, as have been, well, we've probably both run or walked around it quite a bit. Um, power wash concrete areas, clean up the overgrown shot put area, um, and just asking if um, the commission would, well, what does the commission think that they would? want to have um, submitted, whether a request for determination of applicability or a full NOI. This work was done on, with an approved order of conditions about 15 years ago when they did a lot of improvements to all of those uh, fields and the baseball field behind there. there I can pull up the um, plan so you know what we're talking about here. So the main point that is in the, um, in the buffer zone, which triggered the filing, is to the, if, assuming north is up, um, and I'm not sure whether it is. So in the parking lot is over across the bridge over here, and there's this intermittent stream that you cross over when you're entering the, the football field and, and the track area. So all of this, the, um, the highlighted line is a 100 foot buffer. And on the other side, if I scroll over, on the far end of the track, there's another wet area here. So the, the 100 foot buffer extends into the high jump area. Um, but if it's simply a resurfacing and repair of the track's um, surface where need be, and the other me things mentioned, I don't think they need a full NOI. In fact, I'm wondering if they, if there's even a need to do, it is work within the buffer zone that I think could easily be taken care of with a request for determination. So if that's the opinion of the commission, we'll just have them do that. Was, I have a question. Um, there was a tree that fell. I walk there all the time. There was a tree that fell and sort of, um, bashed the fence right that's in the buffer zone 
and uh, well, it's it's in that left hand side area there. Okay. Right in there. Okay. Um, and I wonder if they're going to be doing any work on that. I mean, they got the the tree when it fell. It it bent the fence up pretty badly. I just wonder if they're going to do anything with that. That might involve. I don't know. Okay, I can ask him. Yeah, I mean that would. That's the only. I mean, I noticed that it was it was closed down for a while when that happened because okay. you couldn't go around it. I can ask. Yes. But it, it tore the fence up pretty badly. They had requested, well, the college had requested back about a decade ago after the work was all done, a certificate of compliance, which the commission did vote to approve. So that's been issued. So we have that on record. So the, the work that was authorized um, has been done satisfactorily. Okay. So respectfully request they file a request for determination of applicability with someone in here to present their plan rather than us representing them. Okay. Yep. No, they can be here. May I ask a question? Nick, uh, are you aware of any runoff issues associated with this sports field? Um, not with the sports field in particular. I know there were uh, or was a project done at Coolidge Park, um, supplementary environmental project as part of um, the city's consent decree with the EPA on our, our wastewater system. Um, and I think it involves some bank stabilization along Baker Brook right there. Right. Um, but beyond that, and some of the known runoff issues with the parking lot at the uh, former Civic Center, I don't, I'm not aware of anything at this, this track and field in particular. Thank you. <clears throat> and has anybody here, they, they, they own a piece of land on John Pitch Highway across from Green's Pond, or Putt's Pond, excuse me, and they fenced it off and, and put the green slats in it so you can't see, but they use it for a staging area for dirt and, and, and material, um, but it, it abuts Falula Brook. And I wonder if anyone has ever uh, uh, seen the site, and, and because you mentioned runoff, Ralph, that's yeah. all. Um, I'm wondering how they manage that site, that's all. And if, uh, if, if, if whoever's presenting the field could, could share that information, how the site's being managed, um, I think yeah. we're sticking our nose where it belongs. I would ask uh, that probably to one of the higher ups at Fitchburg State rather than the consultant who probably would be presenting the, yeah. Um, yeah. the plan for the resurfacing of the track, like Jay Bry or something like that. But, yeah. Can ask. Okay. Um, what's next? Uh, we need to uh, vote to adopt the new calendar. Getting everything taken care of here today. Um, can I? So the the new calendar for 2022. Where we are meeting on the second Wednesday of the month in this legislative building with also the hybrid um, option. Can we have a vote and a second to uh, adopt the new meeting calendar for 2022? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ryan? Yep. Aye. Okay. <coughs> um, and then. Uh, Okay, so uh, Woodland Estates. You, sk you, was... skipped, you skipped over Wait. Rollstone Hill. Yeah, well, Woodland Estates, no, we're gonna get to that. Oh, okay. uh, Woodland Estates, uh, Jamie Rowe had requested a continuance to next um, month. And uh, so that leaves us with um, Rollstone Hill, clean up on uh, Conservation Commission land. And uh, Commissioner Baker, did you want to speak to that? Yes, um, it would be helpful, Mike, if you would show that memo that I sent. Getting to that. Because I didn't bring a copy of it with me. Yep. But I did bring something that might be of some assistance. Probably the first thing, Mike, would be 
when you uh, open, open that file, um, show the, uh, no, the, the memo would be the first thing, for sure. This folder is empty? No, they can't be. Oh, Wilson Hill Photos, other, ah, here we go. This is what you mean, Ralph, when it comes up? Oh, I believe so, I just looked at it a few minutes ago at home. So if you can make that yep. larger. Yep. yep, and here's paper copies if you don't want to oh, squint. Oh, I'm sorry, there's only a couple of them. So I can, I can read this. The, basically, the Conservation Commission owns approximately 57 acres of land on Rollstone Hill in Fitchburg, and I'll show you the, on, on a map in a moment. The remaining 46 acres are owned by the city of Fitchburg. Rollstone Hill was an active quarry until the 1920s. Since that time, it's been used informally for recreation, but also for negative activities such as dumping. The city of Fitchburg, with the assistance of the Fitchburg Greenway Committee, on which I also serve, proposes to clean up 13 junk sites located on commission <coughs> land as shown on the map. And then it lists the, all the numbers of the different locations. 2, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, as described on a table that accompanies this. The city is prepared to award a contract for this cleanup work, including the sites on Conservation Commission land. The source of the funding for this contract is a recreational trails grant awarded to the city in 2018 for trail construction and related work on Rollstone Hill. Due to the pandemic and other complications, RTP funding has not been spent to date, meaning it hasn't all been spent, some of it has. The remaining RTP funds must be spent by December 31st, 2021. And uh, therefore, the Fitchburg Greenway Committee has been working actively with um, DPW, Courtney Lamoureux, uh, Mary Delaney, the, the procurement agent, to see if we can get some work done and use up the, as much of the funds as possible. I'm speaking extemporaneously, but I'll turn to, return to the, the, the memo. This is an opportunity for the Commission to perform essential cleanup work on this important property. The trails on Commission land are negatively impacted by the presence of vehicle parts, tires, and other junk, which also pose a safety risk to trail users. Because of the large weight and size of the junk, it must be removed by a contractor utilizing the proper equipment. This work cannot be done by volunteers. The cost of removal of junk from Rollstone Hill is approximately $9,400, according to a quote recently received by the city. This will pay for the removal of junk from land owned by both the commission and by the city. The commission's approval is needed to allow the, the removal of junk from its land. I propose that the commission vote to approve as follows. And this, is the, would, this would be the motion. As the owner of approximately 57 acres of land located on Rollstone Hill in the city of Fitchburg, and mindful of its responsibility as steward of this land, the Conservation Commission hereby gives its approval for the city to contract for the removal of metal junk, tires, and other debris on commission land on Rollstone Hill. The Commission understands that the city will be reimbursed for the contract price by the Mass Recreational Trails Program, and the Commission will incur no expense for work done on its land under this contract. And if you could bring up this, this map. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I've got it with All you. All right. Um, then I could just point out to you where this is going to be. So you'll note that there's um, Areas surrounded by dark green on the left, those are Conservation Commission lands, and areas surrounded by light green on the right and to the north, that's just city land, building, building department land, I believe it's uh, controlled by. And all those numbered locations are the locations where um, this junk has been uh, GPS, uh, GPSed, so there's quite a few numbers on the left, and those are the ones that we're being asked to grant approval for removal of this junk. And there's a spreadsheet also that identifies them too. So I'm gonna go to that now. If, if, you, if you like, might be overkill, but. I got that too, thanks. Okay. You wanna see this? 
Does it have the, to topo the topographical lines on it? That was the one I saw. Yes. It didn't They're have very the light. lines. I mean, you can see them on, yeah. the, on the map. Yeah. So the ones, if you scan down a little yeah. bit, the, the ones at the top are the are not our our responsibility, but the ones that say Conscom in the right-hand column are. So if you just move down, and two of them are are termed large dump site, and they're right off of the King Street Trail. And some of them are, are relatively small, but you know, in a few places there's there's whole chassis of tr of old vehicles and stuff like that. As an aside, um, Ralph, I don't the designation of the City of Fitchburg Building Department. I don't don't go take that as gospel Building Department because I think the practice back in the day is, you know, well let's just give it to the responsibility of the Building Commissioner <laughs> at the time. Well, that's what I've just been told. I don't, I don't know for a fact who in the city controls that land, but it is city land. Mm -hmm. I'll agree. Okay, thank you. So that's it. So as I understand it, the city will be picking it up and being paid for the, well, they're going to be, this is a reimbursement. It's, yes. The, oh, the city will be, yes, and the city will initially pay the contractor that's selected by uh, DPW, and then the recreational trails program. Once once a um, Get suitable invoice I'm, is submitted, will reimburse the city. It's I'm, a reimbursable I'm, project. Understood. Uh, I didn't want to s spread the boys too thin. That's all. But it's going to be subcontracted out. City will front the check, and the the, the trail committee will come back up under that. Gotcha. Yeah, the recreational trails program. Um, I had a question about this. It, se it seems like some of this, this um, junk is rather large, and so... Um, bring up a couple of the photos? No, I mean, that, it, there is. It's metal junk. I mean, metal junk. Okay. Um, getting, gaining access to these dump sites um, will, will the... See, there's one. The contractors have to go through... Uh, an area that would be a wetland or anything to gain no, access. There are no jurisdictional wetlands up there that I'm aware of. I, I was kind of touching on the same idea when, when I was thinking about it because you remember the situation on Harvard Street this past summer and the cleanup that Unitil's contractor did? So is this, you say it can't be done by volunteers, but what kind of equipment would be used or should be used to avoid damaging some of the, the trails that the city has already uh, put some significant money into improving. Yeah, um, actually the, the, the money that, this, that has been expended is mostly not on this side of the uh, property of Rollstone Hill. Um, it's on the other side. And these things are, I think, accessible uh, by suitable equipment, but honestly, I haven't been one of the people that's been talking to the the potential bidders, and so I'm unaware of what um, kind of equipment they'll use. But I would s suggest that the uh, DPW's business manager and whoever else you have talking to contractors would need to yeah. determine whether they're using suitable equipment or not. I, from looking at some of these photos, um, I, I think some heavy equipment's going to need to get back there to remove some of the stuff. Um, one of the challenges that we've had as DPW is that we're also not the ones being given the opportunity to speak with contractors, um, and that's one of the procurement issues that we've been trying to work through with um, the Fitchburg, Fitchburg Greenway Committee. Um, and that's... Uh, kind of violates public procurement law, which is one of the issues, but I don't want to get into that right well, now. Well, I, I guess I would say to that that we're trying to be very careful right now to only make preliminary conversations with potential bidders, not to um, uh, go beyond that and leave it to y your people to actually seek the, put, put the request for quotations out and select them. Right, which is, I, I think, what will ultimately end up happening. But up to this point, we haven't been in those conversations with the prospective um, uh, bidders yet. 
unfortunately. So I, I really can't speak to any conversation that's had been had between no. the city or the Greenway Committee and those those companies. Nor can I, but we we're trying to keep Courtney in the loop at every single step, and it's really up to you guys to make the moves and and hire somebody or not. No, I would just. Please make sure Janet keeps Courtney in the loop because that's been a habitual problem throughout this grant. Right now, um, which we've recently shifted to having Larry Casassa, who's much more familiar with city procedures, having been in that role in, at, at uh, planning and community development as director for 30 years, um, assume the, the main liaison with Courtney. Yeah. And um, so I believe that she'll be hearing from, from him. Okay, good. Yeah, that, that should help a little bit. Um, and once we do have those conversations, you know, I can let Mike know what type of equipment we think might end up uh, getting, Th having, thank you. having to get back there. Thanks. That's all skid steel work on tracks. Yeah. Maybe a mini excavator on tracks. The quickest way to get it out of there, that's what they'll do. Mm. So, and it's pretty, you, you may not even know they were in there in some instances. Yeah, bet, Except the, this right. junk will be gone. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Tim, uh, that was Tim Smith had uh, talked to me before the meeting and said, what are they using? Where are they driving through to get to these areas? Is, well, Tim's not there, here there, there ought to be some money in that scrap metal. <laughs> so $4,900 is the bid price. Are we going to get the scrap out of it? Well, I think that's part of the motivation to um, attract some, some prospective bidders to, to do this work. Um, so we had gotten, uh, or the, the Greenway Committee working with the city had gotten a grant, uh, just over $100,000 to do this work. We dealt with some procurement challenges early on trying to bid the work out to a contractor. We weren't able to attract any bidders for the work whatsoever. So the DPW actually um, had their own staff conduct a significant portion of the work for the grant um, in-house. And we did that this summer and it was very successful. We got a lot of work done. But because we did it in-house, we saved a ton of money, and there's about $40,000 of this grant left over as a result. So we're trying to find creative ways to spend this without violating public procurement policy in the 30 days or so that we have left before this money expires and goes back to the state. So in order to spend this money, we need to keep it under $10,000 so we don't have to force ourselves into a public bid process, which would drag this out well beyond the 30 days that we have. And we're also trying to make sure that we follow procurement law by um, doing our due diligence and soliciting three proposals for each subtask that we're trying to accomplish. So one of the things that we're trying to do with this waste removal is get three quotes, keep them all under $10,000 so as to avoid the public bid process. And in order to do that, we're willing to let the companies that are taking this off property keep the scrap as kind of a, a motivation. Um, to, to do the work for less than that $10,000. And if you don't get three quotes, but you've made an effort to get three quotes, isn't that sufficient? Correct, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, Nick, you're gonna let Mike know what the equipment is and what the, um, the routes that they're taking so that we are aware, I mean, just like, that was the thing that was missing. I, I didn't see the topography there of, is it steep, is it not? I mean, is, we don't want to cause any damage. I guess right. that, that was Tim's main concern. He couldn't tell what the topography was there and how they were going to be getting where they needed to go. Yeah, I, I'm not too familiar with the trails that they're planning to, to take to get in there and access these junk sites for removal. Um, but I will try to find out from Courtney um, after she has conversations with these companies, you know, what they're proposing to get in there with. Um, just looking at some of these photos, unless they cut it up into very small pieces, you know, there's, there's going to need right. to be some substantial, substantially sized equipment back there to remove a, a car chassis that size. So that was Tim, that Tim's main concern was an excavator or, yeah. a, you know, excavator and a loader, you know, something like that. So um, I'll find out. I'll let Mike know. Um, and give them all the information that we end up getting. Yeah, we need to do the use best management practices and I mean, the ground's not frozen yet. Ralph, you would probably pro know better, but the King, the King Street Trail, um, actually the first portion of that is, is paved, right? 
Um, the purple I, one in. Uh, I don't think I've ever walked the full length of that trail, so I'm maybe not the best person to, to ask. Okay. Yeah, there are other members of the committee, uh, like Dick O'Brien, know it much better than I. And I know Dick is, is actively involved in this, this project, um, you know, supervising the work that goes on there, so I'm sure he wouldn't um, allow a contractor to, to do any damage to the trails that he's worked so hard to maintain and create and, and all that, so. Um, Nick, but I might just give you the name of uh, the contractor who is doing the work on that steep slope on the backside of that um, condo site on, on uh, Harvard Street this past summer because they it was it was lakeview i believe it was lakeview yeah, yeah if, and if, they, if you have the contact information we're doing yeah s send it along because i D, D right now is the um i think the the primary uh goal or primary uh company that we're soliciting so um if you've you know the more names the better for sure yeah and if anyone's been on that site recently i i think that cleanup went fairly well I mean, there's several rows of um, erosion control in various rows down that steep slope. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's, I know there was a concern about rutting of that steep slope, the same as it would be here, but I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, and uh, the more options we have, the better, because the work needs to be done and invoiced by December 31st, I believe. Um, so I'll send you the guys contact. Perfect. Yeah. And, and, and just for everyone's information, the reason it's really kind of important that as much of this money gets spent as possible is that the state really hates it when a city returns money unspent. Right. And it jeopardizes, therefore, the ability of the city to get future grants. Government. Um, that's the way it works. <laughs> and uh, we, we had planned on spending the entire, you know, some of the grant. Um, we went out with three different, uh, two or three different um, public procurement uh, bid processes to, to try to solicit contractors. Um, and each time bids were, were well in, in excess of the, the grant funding that we were given. So um, we had to have DPW do the work. So by you, by you folks doing the work so inexpensively, we're actually getting penalized <laughs> for saving money. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> And it is beautiful what you've done, by the way. It's it's terrific. Yeah. I'm wait, wait till happy wait to till help. you all see it. It's no. This it's is a, the trail up there is exceptionally improved from anything that it used to be. And hopefully we can use this forty thousand dollars to really you know put it to the the next level too. So. Thank you. Yep. Uh, can I can I make a motion and so we could move along, or is there, is there anything else? I guess my only concern, and Tim, this was Tim's concern, and I agree with him, was that we were given, we weren't given anything that showed how they were getting to these sites and what kind of equipment they were going to be using to get to those sites. We were just shown the sites, here's the junk, we, get it out of there, sure, but we weren't given anything that showed how and... Uh, I think, unfortunately, given the shortage of time that's available, the, all we're really being asked is, will we allow the city to pursue this process on Conscom land? And we'll have to trust the, that the, the people who procure the work will um, ensure that the, the way it's done, the, the m methods and materials are protective of, of the city's interests. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen. There's just not enough time. Sure. Do you want to make a word, a motion to, to something in, in that effect? Well, the, the motion I read it was what I read. I don't have it in front of me anymore, but it's, it's simply to uh, give permission that this work be carried out. Mm -hmm. um, it's there, down there at the bottom again. You want me to read it again? Now that you have, know the context, as the owner of approximately 57 acres of land, located on Rollstone Hill in the city of Fitchburg, and mindful of its responsibility as steward of this land, the Conservation Commission hereby gives its approval for the city to contract for the removal of metal junk, tires, and other debris on commission land on Rollstone Hill. The commission understands that the city will be reimbursed for the contract price by the Mass Recreational Trails Program, and that the commission will incur no expense for work done on its land under this contract. So if you wanted to, it could be amended. Um. 
Yes, I'd like to amend it to include um, the identification of the type of equipment and the routes that that equipment is taking to get there. How's that, Nick? Is that And I guess any best management practices to, you know, prevent soil erosion and um, along that lines. So perhaps erosion I should, control management. Perhaps I should say identification of the routes and the equipment that will be used will be carried out by the procuring department. Which will ensure which will insist upon best management practices to be used. Yep. How's that? Can we tell the procurement department to do that? Are they well, the, pro <laughs> the, the procuring department, oh, not the okay. procurement oh, department. Okay. You're the procuring department, okay. right? right? So it'll be us. Okay. 40 years. Like Tread lightly. Get in and get out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Minimize the time we're there, minimize the, the impact that we, we create. Get it done. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. And Jeff. Yes. <laughs> thanks, thanks to Courtney. She's doing okay. most of the heavy lifting. For, Who's, for I don't know who Courtney is. She's the DPW's business manager. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you, Courtney. Tell All us. in favor? Are Do you, we have a second? Mark's willing to volunteer to be the second. <laughs> second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Brian? Aye. Yep, strong eye for me. I like, uh, I like everything I heard. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And that leaves us with um, the uh, Ashburn Ham Street. Is that what's left? Right. I and I know that um, the property owner, John DeNewville, had, had registered for the meeting as, as long with his attorney, John Barrett. So. Dan Bolak is, you can. Okay, and I do want to remind everyone that the last month's meeting, everybody um, had a chance to speak, and um, we're going to be limiting uh, people bringing up comments that they've already made. Um, maybe we could start with the um, owner. Are you okay? You're right. I'm fine, but I. I any green is going to be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um. Oh, you bought it, Rob. Oh, you broke it. <laughs> Are you okay? Why don't you just lay it down flat? No, no, no. I'll just put it back. It's fine. <laughs> you can tell Amy everything's fine. Yeah, we can just take that Nothing down. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Counselor, did you have anything you wanted to add before we get started? No, I, I, I guess... I cut my... Oh. Uh, oh. Are you okay? Uh, we talked over the phone. Uh, right. I'm here as a follow up of try a constituents that are trying to uh, zoom in on this issue. Okay, who do we want to start with? Oh. Like I said, we did give everybody more than adequate time to speak at last month's meeting. And, um, oh. I'm not looking to speak. Okay. <laughs> I just want an update as to what's going on. Okay, I think we'll start with the updates, and that might help with the um, folks who might have wanted to speak. And so let's start with the updates. Who wants to go with them? Mike? Well, I'd suggest um, Attorney Barrett, since he's here, okay. we can see him. Attorney Barrett? And, uh, and, and John, uh, the property yes. owner. Um, Madam Chair Chairwoman, uh, thank you. Um, uh, as, as Mike has indicated, I'm John Barrett, uh, attorney practicing uh, in Fitchburg and Townsend, and um, I was asked to uh, uh, attend tonight on behalf of uh, uh, John and Tom DeNouville. Uh, as you know, John is the property owner of the property in question, and I believe has owned the property for about 50 years. And um, it's been under Chapter 61. They're, they've been doing, I think, forest cutting there for a number of years, and um, there was a forest cutting plan for the, I believe, the entire parcel uh, that was uh, approved by the state forester. The uh, 
sort of concurrently, uh, uh, Mr. Thomas de Nouveau uh, was the proponent of a, a solar project that was uh, submitted to the planning board for site plan review, and as I understand, was also um, uh, run, run by the Conservation Commission. And the site plan review had certain criteria in it, uh, conditions for the, uh, the installation of the solar facility, which I believe only is going to be on six, 16 acres of the 48 acre parcel. Um, and it's, I'm not quite certain of all the geography here, but I believe it's to one side, uh, more towards the Ashburnham Street side and the other land that is solely involved with the forest cutting plan is uh, involved more towards the Stickney Road side. Unfortunately, I guess there was some miscommunication uh, as far as the the conditions of the site plan review and um, the forest cutting plan, the, the forester, uh, the logger went ahead with the work and apparently has complied with all the requirements of the forest cutting plan. But he was not cognizant of the uh, limitations with respect to the site plan review conditions. So I guess I'm not telling you folks anything you probably don't already know, and I'm sorry if I sort of preface my comments with, with that, but I, I guess I'm here on behalf of the Denouvals to say that um, they, they want to rectify the situation. Uh, they realize that there's been some problems as a result of this. Certainly the solar project does have a plan for uh, drainage and um, and then curing any problems that might run off might occur because of the solar project but that did not but that was certainly not incorporated in the the forest cutting plan um, so you know with that I guess what we're here tonight is to just have a discussion with with you folks and uh, I think the Denouvals are aware of the the concerns that the neighbors have I think and they're talking with I think at least some of the neighbors they they do support the the solar project, but um, have concerns about the runoff and, and drainage issues. Um, and to, just to jump ahead a little bit, just from talking with John, and I'm sorry if I seem a bit uh, unprepared on this, but we didn't realize the board was meeting until yesterday uh, on this issue. Uh, but um, I believe there was some suggestion that what can be done that would help to mitigate the um, uh, some of the drainage issues and the runoff is to have the forester or the logger rather uh, uh, cut, uh, I guess, uh, chip the uh, slash that is still on the site and to spread it, uh, I guess, appropriately to mitigate or try to reduce the amount of drainage that's that's going off the site. But uh, other than that, I'm not sure what other uh, uh, plans are, are in the works and maybe John or Tom can, can speak to those. But um, I, I guess at that point, I. Uh, uh, ask if the board has questions and, and what we want to do is try to figure out how to correct the situation uh, here. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Is this Mr. Denouville? I, I just wanted to make a couple of quick comments uh, about the layout. Uh, basically, Think of the property, it's, it's not quite 50 acres, but if, you, if it were 50 acres, it would be 30 acres of the solar farm and 20 acres, uh, which will have a conservation easement. And the 20 acres is to the east on the Stickney Road side. Uh, and uh, so that's just the layout. And uh, um, otherwise, uh, I, I think that the remediation uh, that will be required, uh, the logger will do certain things that are uh, approved by the state forester uh, and required by the state forester, whose name is uh, uh, Mike Downey. And uh, then beyond that, in order to comply with the conditions set up for the solar farm, uh, additional steps will be taken and we will uh, basically uh, uh, figure out what needs to be done, uh, especially on the conservation property for which there was no particular uh, drainage plan uh, because in the solar 
proposal there was no cutting activity anticipated for the eastern 20 acres, but it has been included in the logging project. So to the extent that there's any further remediation required that isn't done by the logger, it will be done by us for both pieces of property. But the solar park already has a rather elaborate drainage plan and detention basins, et cetera, which will simply be installed presumably as an early step in the whole construction of the solar farm. Mr. Deneuville, do you have an engineer on board in order to look at the situation and come up with some remediation plan, particularly for the east side, the Stickney Road side? We're working on that. We might use the people that the solar farm is using, and we might use a separate group. So that will take us a few days to get that organized. May I ask a question? Mr. Deneuville, with all due respect, the way this is playing out, it's like trying to, you know, prevent the horse from leaving the barn after the barn door has already been left open, because those provisions that you just described with the drainage and detention basins and other provisions that I recall were in the order of conditions were supposed to be in place prior, not afterwards, if I'm not correct in remembering it that way. So now we're trying to, you know, address a problem that may have already been caused, and I don't know that that's going to be so simple. I haven't been there myself, so I don't know what it looks like on the land, but we've certainly heard the testimony of a number of people about it. I think Tom has his hand raised, Madam Chairman, if he could be recognized. Who's Tom? Tom Deneuville. Top left. We don't have... Yeah, who was just speaking? Who was it that was just speaking? That was John. Who's this gentleman? This is the attorney, John Deneuville. Okay. This is John Barry. The person after was... This is John. Okay. Okay. So who's Tom? His family member. Is it your brother? I'm John's son. Oh, the son. If I'm... My mic is live here. Okay. Sounds like it might be. Thank you. I'm John... Can you... Sounds like you all can hear me. Thank you. I just wanted to point out, and to the point that was just made, the logging project didn't require any drainage plan. It went along the lines of the permit that it was authorized to have pursuant to the state plan, which is really unrelated to the order of conditions for the solar plan, as a standalone project. Whatever the logger has done that might be in conflict with the order of conditions for the solar plan, we will work to put a plan together to resolve and remediate, and we'll provide that to the Conservation Commission. So, of course, nothing has started with respect to the solar project. The only thing that has occurred is with respect to the logging project, and they are, of course, two separate projects completely. And so I think that the issue that I believe we're all grappling with is getting the property back in place so that it is compliant with or is aligned with the order of conditions that was approved for the solar project. And we view it as our responsibility to put a plan together to discuss with the Conservation Commission to get that to happen. And so the gentleman who asked about the engineering consultants, et cetera, I think the idea from our perspective is... You kind of got cut off there, Tom. ...to work 
to do it. Yeah, sorry. Do what we need to do to to, to get the uh, the property remediated to whatever extent it needs to be. That's all I have to say. <coughs> so do you have something that you're submitting to the commission on behalf of Mad River Solar? I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Our permit was with Mad River Solar, wasn't it? Right. Permits with Mad that. River Solar. Yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. Mad River Solar has been the uh, consulting developer who's worked on this project with us. They, they, um, they were the ones who the, the, the permit was uh, written for, and and we will all be working together to present a, a plan to the Conservation Commission. So, Mike, if you could refresh my memory. Excuse me, Mr. DeNouville. The, um, the permit from Mad River Solar, the permit with Mad River Solar, was it their permit or was it their permit on behalf of these, um, the DeNouvilles? No, it was the other way around. The applicant was Mad River Solar LLC and the name was Jared Al Alford. And I remember another partner of, of Jared, I just don't recall. The property owner is still listed as John DeNouville on, okay. on the order of conditions. And John, um, the, the father, still owns the property. J Tom, if I may ask, are you part of the LLC? Um, Mad River, or is that another entity altogether? We, 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 we have, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I consider me part of the of the uh, of the LLC for, for business purposes. So he's able to speak on behalf of Mad River Solar, or you're speaking yes. on behalf of the owner. Uh, I, I'm speaking on behalf of Mad River Solar. Because we haven't heard from Mad River Solar at all in any of this yet. But, but they are aware moment. of this, um, Tom? Okay, yes. yes. Just a second, Councillor. Excuse me. Councillor Kucher. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to know who... Who is the president, vice president? Who, who are the active members of Mad River Solar? Are you an officer or how are you uh, entitled to speak upon Mad, Mad River Solar? By, by the way, just, just to be uh, clear, um, um, they were hired as a consulting firm for this project by me. So you are the initi you are the initiating person that brought Mad River Solar yes. into this. Absolutely. So you're ultimately the one responsible for the destruction of this of this land. So just to answer that question, the the logging project has nothing to do with us. We do not own the property currently. So who owns the property? My father is on the line. Here. Your father. And who, who initiated the logging? That was John DeNuvo. That was John. And that, that initiation of the, of the logging was according to what plan? I'm sorry, I'm, maybe I'm getting too attorney-like. I apologize. Uh, no, uh, uh, Councilor Kucher, th this is, um, it was a forest cutting plan. I believe it's under Chapter 61. It was approved by the state forester. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, a delta between what is permitted under the forest cutting plan and what was expected would be the result of the, um, the solar project. The so, there, as as John, Tom DeNouville said, it's really completely two separate things, which unfortunately coincided in, a, in an unfortunate way. If, if there was no solar project allowed, <clears throat> uh, in the in the first place, the forest cutting plan would have been, I believe, as I understand it from the state forester, perfectly okay. But obviously, with the solar project in the wings, and the solar project, as Tom said, hasn't started, uh, they were going to have to remediate to bring it to satisfy the conditions of the the site plan permit and the the uh, I believe the order of conditions. 
And that is, is that including uh, the 150 uh, foot um, border from Stickney Road and Ashburnham Road? Are they gonna be fixing that as well? I, I I believe I believe it was 125, but not the, maybe 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 I'm mistaken. I thought it was 150. Maybe it's 125. But are they going to be but, fixing yeah, the problem? Yeah, quibble about it. But no, I think obviously, I, I think the intent and John and Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the intent is to restore that buffer. Obviously, with and I'm not sure how far the logger went uh, up to the property lines, but the intent would be to restore that buffer. Obviously that's not going to occur overnight and other remediative steps would probably have to take place to try to ad address the, the drainage issues but i i believe and again john and tom correct me if i'm wrong the plan would be to restore that uh, that buffer in the areas required and who is responsible for any damages caused uh by not having the proper drainage in place for my constituents uh, I'm, i think that that would be a private issue uh, mr kuchar which i don't think we could really deal with at this point in time what do we think would it be the, mad river the, solar the or would have... it be the nanuvos no no so just i think just if i may just to to for clarification what the logger has whatever the logger has done will need to be uh in compliance with the state issued permit never mind the solar project for a second that's a standalone project. It, whatever is required is requ required by the state, I believe in conjunction with this town, but someone else can correct me on that point. Um, but it's a, it's a state permit. And, uh, and so if you have, if there are issues with respect to the log project, absolutely. We, 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 we're, we will, we are equally concerned because it's, on my father's property, um, but those, whatever those issues are that uh, that may have, whatever those things are that may have taken place on the property, to the extent that they are in conflict with the order of conditions that the Conservation Commission has approved for the solar project, as a, from the solar development perspective, they, they need to be remediated in advance so that there. They, so the pro property is, is uh, in compliance with the order of conditions there. So they're two separate things, just to be clear. I'd like to thank the commission. Um, my question is done. Thank you. Councillor. Thank you. Mike, did we ever get a, uh, an answer on the state, on whether the how our local bylaws interact with the state forestry cutting plan, the, the, the forest cutting policy act and how it relates to our, our local bylaws, like as if, does it supersede our local bylaws? Did we ever get, well, get anything? It's covered under that ex ex exemption with certain provisions uh, that you, you know, notify the commission and they have 10 days in which to comment when the uh, forest cutting plan is submitted. Uh, I have a question. Uh, are you saying that there is an active, when this forestry project began, there was an active chapter 61 or 61A up to date on that property? Or was there a 61 in the 50 years that you owned it? Was it up to date? at the time of filing for the forestry program, for the forestry cut. I guess, John, I'd have to ask, uh, Madam Chairman, if I, I might, John, if John DeNouville, if you could, I, I may have misspoke. I, I was on the presumption that it was chapter 61 and that the cutting plan was done in uh, under that. But uh, I know chapter, forest cutting, it comes under chapter 132, I believe, but. Uh, I'm, I was presuming that it is chapter 30, 61, chapter 61 land. Uh, could, I, could I try to answer? Um, I, I didn't uh, correct you, Attorney Barrett, because I don't really know the answer to the question. However, what I believe is the case is that this is the first logging that's been done under any rules in 50 years to my knowledge. 
Maybe I've forgotten something that happened long ago. It's certainly possible. Uh, but there hasn't been any active logging program or even any active forest management program that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, so then if you don't have a forestry management program, it's apparent that you are not on 61 or 61A. So this becomes, from the state forestry perspective, what is the land use? Is it a solar field? Or are you going for the exemption on a 61 or a 61A? So if it's under the solar part, you need to abide by the orders of condition. If it's just a forestry program, then you get the, the agricultural exemption. So it's a land use question. Is there a solar field going there, or are we just doing a forestry cut? The, the plan that was approved, just if I may interrupt, was based on a simple uh, 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 agricultural exemption. I don't know the number, okay. but that, so that then was So basically the, the solar field was on the back burner. The, 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 you can't the have logger, both ways. The, it's the, a land use issue. Yeah. Basically, the, 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 the logging project was done without any reference to the solar project, period. That's just that. a historic fact. I, I know that for a fact, too. I spoke with Mike Downing in length. So he is unaware of any solar project in the foreseeable future, so he granted you the 61 exemption. That's why you're not held to the orders of conditions. But if the solar field, then it becomes a land issue. Mike Downing would shut that project down, you'd have to switch land use, and then you would probably get your land use, but then the orders of condition come into effect. So you're doing a cut, circumventing the orders of conditions that you agreed to two years ago. Uh, well, just to be clear, uh, uh, the landowner didn't ag ag agree to, to anything at the time. It was a, um, the, the solar developer um, with, with a, an option um, um, made the proposal to the town. So the, 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 land, the landowner is, is uh, it, it wasn't a part of the, um, the, the permitting process for the solar project in, in junction with an option to buy the property, if you follow me. In other words, your permit is with Mad River Solar, as you pointed out, it's not with John DeNeville. Well, somebody has to own what the land use is. What is the land use? I would say that I've been to the site, and I would say that it, you could consider it inconsistent with preparation for a solar field. And that's just a drive-by. It's not a complete clear cut. It's an aggressive cut on the overstory of what's there. It, it's not a complete clear cut, like there are going to be solar panels going on that hill the way it sits now. Um, Madam Chairwoman? Yes. John Barrett. Yes, um, sir. If I might, I, I, I know it's, it's somewhat hard to comprehend this because it, things aren't necessarily going in a linear fashion. Um, uh, I, I think that, again, as, as Tom and John have suggested, that unfortunately it, it was a situation where the, the landowner had the ability to deal with the, the forest cutting plan. He did submit the forest cutting plan. Um, that was done, um, and it was apparently, uh, and I'm not sure if Mr. Downing was aware of the future plans for the solar. He was I, not. I don't, he, he was not? He was okay. Not. So, unfortunately, the two purposes were, you know, being pursued at, on separate courses and now have crossed paths. Uh, but as, as Tom had said earlier, the, the solar project, even though it's been permitted, and I, I thought the permits were issued last summer, I could be wrong about that, but um, they, um, they haven't started yet. So, um, and again, I think that to try to 
wrap up. I think, you know, obviously there are issues there that need to be addressed and that need that will be addressed. As, uh, as Tom and John said, uh, they will be in con consulting with environmental engineers to how to, how to best uh, cure the situation. Uh, I'm not sure how long, how much time it'll take to get that, pull that plan together. I do believe that there's some um, uh, concern that, you know, that we have something in place before the spring, uh, spring weather and the melting. Right now we've got a bit of a reprieve maybe with uh, the winter coming in. But um, I, I know that, I, uh, I think John had, John Denouble had suggested that the possibility, and I'm not sure, John, if you got this from Mike Downing, that uh, a um, one ameliorating factor could be the cutting, you know, chipping of the slash that's on the site, um, and that might help resolve some of the problem. But John, if you can maybe address that. Um, before what, what we move say, on, excuse me. Before we move on, Mr. Newville, we've got uh, sure. Nick Erickson who's raised his hand. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, so I understand that this is this is two separate projects, and that's what's being conveyed here, but. Um, when it comes down to it, the overall hydrology of the site doesn't necessarily follow those two distinctions. Um, and a, an, if an order of conditions was issued for the solar field and this drainage design for the solar field was predicated on a certain uh, land cover at the given time, so you know that site being fully forested, then in my professional engineering opinion, that engineering design for that stormwater system for the solar field needs to be entirely reevaluated and re-engineered to accommodate for the, the change in land cover um, that's resulted from the forestry operation. So um, I know there's work that should be done in the short term to control the runoff issues that have been caused by the forest, foresting, uh, forestry operation. And I, I, I think an engineer should look at that and advise um, the landowner and um, his son on you know, what, what remedial actions might be necessary. But I think also the, the Conservation Commission should, should consider um, reevaluating that order of conditions and the drainage design that was approved for the solar field itself. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's why I was asking, just a second, that's why I was asking um, Tom DeNouville if he was speaking on behalf of Mad River Solar, because that's who our permit is, that's who's permitted for this project. And we hadn't, we worked with Jared and those people, but we had never seen or heard of um, Tom DeNouville uh, in our process. So that's why I was asking mm -hmm. who, who he was speaking on behalf, for whom he was speaking on behalf, because at this point we still, now we've heard from Mad River Solar, if you're speaking on behalf of them, but prior to that, we hadn't heard from them at all, correct? Right. Yes. yes, we still, so now we've heard from Mad River Solar on behalf of Tom DeNouville. Is that what I can say in the notes? Just a second, Councillor, um, Commissioner Donnelly. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd ask everyone to, let's narrow our focus. <clears throat> um, we met 30 days ago and uh, <clears throat> There were just shy of a dozen people here sharing their concern. Um, I really wish we had an order of conditions at the last meeting. I really wish we had an order of conditions in front of us at this meeting. And let's narrow our focus to the order of condition. We don't know where they violated, if it was violated, without having it. Okay, so that should be, that should be a matter, we should have it right now. <clears throat> Secondly, we look at the order of condition to find out where the violations are and, and proceed from there. But, but we need that and we, uh, we should have it. Um, but secondly, um, Tom, <clears throat> in the initial order of conditions was issued, predicated on a solar field and 50 acres west. <clears throat> and then a subsequent uh, <clears throat> forestry cutting plan was authorized by you, Tom? No. No. I'll take, I'll take, no. full, I'll take full responsibility by, uh, for the, the cutting plan. plan. Excuse me? There, there was a forest cutting plan for the solar field, and we, we issued an order of conditions based on that information. 
And then an additional forest cutting plan included the area that was not approved, excuse me, that was misrepresented on the order of conditions. I'm wondering who, author, who, who ordered the second forest cutting plan. That's all. And I, I don't even want to go there. I just wanted that answer and I don't want to discuss it anymore. I just wanted to know who authorized the second forest cutting plan. I'll, I'll take full responsibility for okay, doing that. Okay, thank you. That's it. I, I, no, I just want to deal okay. with the order of conditions because that's okay. the Conservation Commission's purview. And if we can't do that, we could talk forever about the rest of the deal. That's correct. And that's why I was asking, is Tom DeNewville speaking on behalf of Mad River Solar? Because that's who we have the order of conditions with. Just a second, Councillor. Um, Mr. DeNewville, John DeNewville, you had a comment or something you wanted to I, say? I, I just have one comment about the cutting plan, which is the following. that. Uh, according to Massachusetts law, what was done uh, uh, was done according to what the uh, logger proposed and the Massachusetts State Forester approved. And, and any consequence arising from that uh, is basically the responsibility of the landowner mm -hmm. and the logger and the uh, forestry, uh, the, the, the state forester. And, and so if there is damage to property, it has nothing to do with the solar project, which hasn't begun yet. And, and it's just a, a logging project that was designed in, by this collaboration of the uh, forester and the, uh, what I call the logger. Uh, and, um, and the consequences of it should be manageable within the, the whole uh, state uh, regulatory framework. And so, uh, and I presume that will happen. Then I think the question will become, how does the solar project and, and the suggestions that have been made tonight seem to me very relevant to the extent that the solar project needs to uh, uh, the conditions need to be revised according to the lay of the land, the re whatever restoration has to be done. That's kind of a separate next step. Uh, and, and as far as any damage arising from the logging is concerned, it, it, it's, it's not the fault of the solar project. It's the fault it, uh, of the harvesting of the and if there is damage, and I don't know whether there really is, but if there is, you know, then it's the responsibility of uh, the uh, state forester to either approve or not approve the project. And if there is damage, presumably he will require it be remediated. But I don't know how those things work. I'm just sort of out of state guy. Uh, <laughs> harvesting timber that's been sitting around for years uh, because I guess in my mind most of these trees are going to be cut down by the solar project so you might as well generate a little income uh, before that begins but in retrospect of course I wish we hadn't done it this way. Okay thank you Mr. DeNewville. Councillor Kucher. Yeah, I just looked up the Secretary of State's uh, Thank you. I just look up the, uh, the Secretary of State um, <laughs> looking at who is Mad River Solar Holdings LLC and uh, manager is Thomas DeNuvo. Uh, there is no indication of John DeNuvo um, on the Secretary of State's website. So uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Thomas DeNuvo is a manager of um, Mad River Ho Solar Holdings, but what has occurred has just sickened me and talking about profits and making money and whatnot. Meanwhile, my constituents are now looking at a, a, a completely decimated uh, backyard. I mean, a lot of my folks in Stickney Road are you know, now looking, they can actually see through uh, a, the few feet of forest that they have left. Uh, they need to really start uh, fixing the problem that they have created. And I know it's gonna take decades, if not a century, to at least try to recover from the damage that this company has done. 
and that needs to be noted by the, the, the Conservation Commission. I mean, this is, this is terrible. Thank you, Councillor. Um, let's try and move forward. Um, when I spoke with our environmental consultant today, he did suggest that it might be in, his inter in our interest to have him review the order of conditions and go out there and look at the site. And so we'll certainly, um, yes. One, one more thing, is there any way that we can stop any kind of further work on this until the Conservation Commission can get a hold of this? and really understand what exactly is going on, almost an injunction, if so to speak? Well, that came up at the last meeting, didn't it? And the abutters said that they didn't want there to... But after the last meeting, further cutting, which I, I've, I talked to um, uh, the Conservation Commission about, further cut, cutting did occur. So what transpired in the last meeting had no bearing on what was occurring and further cutting did take place. In fact, I had many constituents saying they're, they're cutting even further into the 125 foot um, um, uh, barrier between their property and, and what has occurred here. I think we need to stop this whole project until we can get a, a, a sense of what's going on here. Thank you, Councillor Kucha. Um, I think, if I, as I recall, there was, um, when that came up at the last meeting that they said no we don't want it to stop because we want them to continue to well we want the the mitigation to happen that was supposed to come and the logs the you yeah. know tall logs uh, piles of logs to remove that they were looking at too i mean i'm seeing the objection with hauling what has already been cut off the site no. yeah if, if i may if i might madam chairman um you know, I, that was my understanding. I wasn't at the last hearing, but I, I, I understood that the, uh, the, it was okay to remove the trees that had been cut, but I, I believe it was directed to the logger to don't, not to do any more cutting. But um, I guess we'll have to look into that, find out if, if he continued to cut. Uh, hopefully he didn't, but uh, certainly hopefully he didn't do it within the buffer. But. We'll have to investigate that. So is cutting continued to occur? Are they cutting still, Mr. DeNewville? To my knowledge, uh, the project is winding up in the next few days, and, uh, and uh, whatever remediation is required, they will be doing also. Um, but in detail, I can't give you a, 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 detail, a more detailed answer. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I think that, uh, is there anybody who wants to speak that hasn't already spoken? Let's start there in the, um, Mr. Bolak, in the, uh, the no, we're looking for, uh, constituents who might be, Oops, I'm sorry. Thank you. So we're looking for constituents who might be interested in speaking. Yes, specifically constituents who have not already spoken at the last meeting. Uh, I know you can't control that, but um, if they could. Uh, uh, Ms. Eileen Sullivan. Okay, yes. Yeah, uh, she and. Go ahead, Ms. Sullivan, we can uh, have you speak. Sorry, Ms. Eileen Sheehan. Did she, I don't, I pull my notes up from last week. Did she speak last, last month? Yeah, she, she was here in person. Okay, is there anyone who was, um, can you see from the, the group, is there anyone who well, I see, um, did not have a chance to speak last month? Yeah. I see Ms. Capone on Ashman Street. I know she was in person. Yeah. Catherine Haas. Mm. I may be wrong. Yeah, she did. She, she did. That's okay. No, I, we're just trying to. Um, I mean, everybody's. What everyone has said has been made. Has made it into the record and. Um, she did. This is new information. She did speak. I have her in my notes. Yeah. I have. As did Mrs. Sheehan. Or Miss, I don't know. Ms. Sheehan. 
I, I, <clears throat> this has to do with the minutes. Uh, Eileen Steve, she and, uh, Bingham of uh, 227 Sickley Road um, says she listed several reasons why the cutting was in violation of the OOC. Um, I, I believe that the violations that she listed should have been listed in the, in the uh, minutes. Okay. And, um, and to that end, um, I'd like the Conservation Commission to be in receipt of an order of conditions and that we should go through it um, individually before the next meeting, um, identify the violations. Okay. If there's anything outside of the order of conditions, such as drainage, erosion control, et cetera, um, address those individually and collectively when we get together and deal with those first. Because if we can't do those, you know, pursuing uh, cutting, he had a cutting plan, he can do it, it's not our purview. Um, that is correct, and it's, it's something to remember. It's to take care of our business, and if there was, if, if there's damage to the backyards of the Stickney Road Revenant, they can run with it. But it, it may not be our fight. But let's take care of us first, at any rate, and it may take care of some of theirs, if not, if not all. Right, so prior to this meeting, I did speak with the environmental consultant who said he wanted to review the order of conditions and go on the site and make a list of violations or see what the violations were and um, develop that on behalf of the commission. The landowners have taken complete responsibility. I I'm disappointed yes. that 30 days later, there's no plan in place, but they've taken complete responsibility. So yes. um, they'll do probably what they're told to do, but um, the idea of them um, stopping logging, think about it for a moment, or four. Why stop logging? Were they, were they given a cease and desist? And if they weren't, they can keep logging. What, what? I, can, I can address that tomorrow in my capacity as an attorney if necessary. But I think the further cutting needs to stop if there are, if there are logs that are there and they need to be removed from the property, that's fine. Anybody's expectation that they would have stopped what they were doing, why? Why would they? Did you tell them to do it? Stop? Did, you, did anybody tell them to stop? Why would anybody stop doing? I thought it was. I thought it was an understanding that th there's an issue here and it needed to be addressed. You but thought. then after after the well, it's not in my purview. It's under it's under the conservation commission's purview. I'll, again, I would address the conscom. Did we give them a cease and desist? And if we didn't, they're they're in fully entitled to continue to cutting on their property. Then I'll, I'll draft up the season to like it. order tomorrow. I have, uh, just as a, as a point of order, Mike, um, can the Conservation Commission, I don't, I think we can, uh, our purview is what falls under the order of condition in the permit. I don't think our purview is the forest cutting plan because that comes from the state. And so this is complicated. I, I grant you that it's complicated. And I, have a, I have a lot of unhappy constituents, so I, you, you can understand why I'm upset. Absolutely, Councillor. But what I would say to that is in this state, the landowner has full use of their land. Mm -hmm. So they may have promised the buffer zone. I think they've shifted gears. I think the solar field is not on the table. So maybe taking down the buffer that was once promised may negate the solar field. But that may be their plan from day one. I think they're under a forestry plan that Mike Downing has approved. He sees nothing wrong with it. And you can cut every tree on your land. You don't need to leave a buffer for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. So they're doing what is in the realm of the state <coughs> forester. It may negate the permit for this solar field. And I think it has. That may be where we're going with this anyway. That's, and I, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you, sir. I think they have overstepped what the Conservation Commission has allowed. Yeah. Um, and when yeah, maybe, land, maybe the issue is with the Forestry Service. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But there is a, there is a it seems to me, a, a further issue. We, we understand that apparently these, the, the forest cutting plans uh, because they're considered agricultural or under an exemption to the Wetlands Protection Act that we're here to enforce. So the cutting can take place irrespective of the Wetlands Protection Act, but as far as I know, it cannot result in off-site impacts which uh, would be uh, detrimental to the city and to the state if they're occurring. I don't know if they're occurring. 
but that's one of the things that Tim Smith ought to examine. Yes, and I, like I said, I spoke to him prior to this meeting, and he is, he said it was in, our, in the Conservation Commission's interest that he review the order of conditions and go out there and identify if there are violations associated with the order of conditions. But I'm saying beyond the order of conditions, if there are off-site impacts off the property, I don't believe that the, wet, that the cutting plan you know, entitles the, any landowner to cause damage off their property. But, so that needs to be looked at. Well, if they have exemptions, they're not exempt. Filling, they, they can't fill a wetland. Right. So they're not exempt from the Wetlands Protection Act. They have some exemptions. They can go to a wetland. They can't go in wetlands. They can cross it. Hmm? They can cross, cross wetlands. Yeah. With temporary Under crossings. The plans, they can cross. <laughs> yeah, but they can't go. They can't cut in a wetland. My point. That, that, that's an exemption. They can't alter that wetland. No, they can. And that's some of the allegations of my constituents is that they have they they have gone into the wetland area, so which is one of the So we're going to send our environmental consultant out so that he can file a report with the commission that identifies if there are um, you know what happened. Because at this point we don't know. No, I, 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 I understand, I understand. Oh, and, you know, and I'm, I'm just here for my constituents, you know, who have, you know, raised multiple concerns. They were here, you know, last month. Um, I told them that I would be here this, mo this month and I will be continuing to come to the Conservation Commissions until we can figure out what's going on here and address the situation. Councillor Kucher, we are always happy to see you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh -oh. So uh, can we have, do we need a motion to send Tim out or can we just send Tim out? You will send it to him tomorrow. Okay, okay. All, all, all you guys. And um, we'll get him out there so we can start to identify it. And I, I do, I think it's important to um, acknowledge that the, uh, all the parties involved are, seem to be willing to work together. And um, I think that's half the battle from what we normally see. <laughs> Um, so uh, to have all the stakeholders involved is um, always uh, a benefit to the conservation of our natural resources and facilitating compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act and the local wetland by the local bylaws that we um, we follow. And once you, again, was there anybody who wanted to speak that was not uh, able to speak last month? I want to give everybody the chance to talk and have their um, comments put into the uh, into the record. But we also can't have people who already spoke um, speaking again. Hey, I don't see any, okay. any hands raised. Okay. So. Um, Thank you everybody for coming and for your, um, your careful attention to the conservation of our natural resources in Fitchburg and um, your- Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Excuse thank me. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Barrett, thank you. Um, so let's see, we've got everything. Oh, one last thing we did, is there, um, I gotten everything on my list here. Uh, was computer uh, correspondence. I think we got everything we needed. Mike, do you have anything else? Okay. Can I have a uh, a motion and a Second, to adjourn the December 8th, 2021 regular meeting of the Conservation Commission. Motion, Motion Tracy. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, good night. Folks.